Okay, so moving on to the knee, we'll be evaluating the proximal tibia and the fibular head. So in evaluating the, um, the proximal tibia, we have a pretty kind of simple um, arrangement that we can use. And we can do this either lying or we can do it seated with the patient's leg hanging off the table. But either way, we're gonna wanna stabilize above and then stabilize below. So stabilize the, the femur and then make contact with the proximal tibia. And then we can uh, engage in some external rotation and internal rotation. And then compare to the other side. Internal rotation, external rotation. And what I'm finding is normal motion on this left-hand side, but on this right-hand side, there's a restricted barrier in internal rotation, freedom of motion in external rotation. So I'm gonna name that as an externally rotated proximal tibia, or I could name it as an external rotation dysfunction. Now moving on to evaluation of the fibula and the fibular head, um, we're gonna make contact with um, the fibular head with one hand, and then our other hand is gonna be stabilizing the ankle, which is the distal end of the fibula. So initially we can uh, start by uh, just locally, uh, kind of in a short lever, pushing posteriorly, pushing anteriorly on the fibular head and evaluate motion. You can also compare that to the opposite side. And we can also use some enhancing maneuvers once we kind of have an idea of what might be going on. So I'm finding that I have a little bit of preference in anterior glide, a little bit of restriction in posterior glide. So now I can use uh, enhancing maneuvers at the ankle and foot um, to enhance each of those motions. So with plantar flexion, I would expect the um, distal fibula or the lateral malleolus to move anterior and the fibular head would move posterior. So um, with plantar flexion, the um, fibular head would move posterior and I'm finding a restriction of motion there or a restricted barrier there. And then with dorsiflexion, the Lateral malleolus moves posterior and the radial head will move anteriorly and I'm finding normal motion uh, anteriorly. Now, in terms of um, the enhancing motions, I can also think of other ankle and foot motions as well, in addition to plantar flexion and dorsiflexion, the same way that I would think of all paired motions or all linked motions for the ankle and foot. So with plantar flexion, I could also consider equivalent inversion and internal rotation. All of those are going to draw the lateral malleolus anterior and um, then drive the uh, fibular head posterior. Conversely, if we think of uh, dorsiflexion and eversion and um, external rotation as linked motions, all of those move our um, lateral malleolus posterior and then would drive our fibular head anterior in response. So for my fibular head here, or my patient's fibular head here, I find a preference of motion in anterior glide and a restriction of motion in posterior glide. So I would name this as an anterior somatic dysfunction of the right fibula. I could also name it as a right, fibula, right, right fibular head anterior or an anterior fibular head on the right side.